getting the analytics to work for you uh, is a little bit of work, but it's not hard. Uh, you first have to understand how the analytics works in the dashboard and then uh, change some code. I promise you it's not that hard. So the way that the analytics work is once you have several courses in the dashboard uh, and you go to analytics and then graph the analytics. So the way that analytics work is there's two tabs that are hidden and if you go to uh, view hidden sheets you might actually have four tabs and you'll see why in a minute. But let's look at the design analytics. This is the left column and this is the template. So the template lists all the standards. So on the ID perspective, there's 37 Oscar standards from Open SUNY, and then there's 30 campus level standards. And those are by default hidden in the tabs, but, but they, they are there in the rubric. And then we have the same for the faculty, 37 SUNY standards, and then 30 campus ones, and the same thing for the reviewer. So there's all the analytics from the rubric. And then these three charts right here, tally up all the responses and that's what the graphs are based off of. So what happens when you choose when you run design analytics is this software will go through all the courses that you see and then it will pull all the information from them and populate it in these columns. So I'm actually going to run that right now so you can see that happening. And this actually takes between you know one and three minutes depending on how many you, uh, rubrics you have. So I'm going to speed this up. But I want you to see how it's populating. And uh, the other thing you need to know before I do that is that it doesn't actually do it on this tab. And uh, recall that there is no design tab. But it will take a carbon copy of this sheet and then add all the rubrics in there. So I'm going to actually view this so you can see it working in the background. All right, so that actually took about two minutes, which is why uh, we usually run it at night automatically for you. Uh, so the design tab now has some numbers in it and these are calculated uh, just by summing. There's no uh, no script running that so this happens pretty fast. And so when it's time to graph the code in the dashboard says hey get this range right here which I think goes all the way and graph it. And then it says the same thing for this range, and then the third graph is from this range. So we're going to actually modify the script to add more for you. Um, so let's first come up with a table. And just for funsies, let's just say that we want to do the campus standard. And I know that in this example there's no analytics for the campus, so it's going to be a really boring graph. But what you have to do is find the cell that you want. So we're looking at 39 for the ID, then we're looking at 106 for the faculty, and then we're looking at 173. So you come down here and say equals sum C39, C106, C173, and hit enter, and this is Campus 1. Alright, so we have Campus 1, and that is C3910673. And I'm going to drag that over, and that's how we uh, say, you know, take the minor, moderate, and major. Now, this number right here should be the balance of however many there are not. Uh, so, what that means is we'd have to add them up and subtract them from this particular cell. So instead of remembering all that, I just usually look at the one that I know, the graph that works, and I paste it in, but instead of saying sum C240, I say 253. So essentially what this does is it will add this particular cell will add up however many ones there are here, or twos or threes, and subtract from 24. Now, uh, for demonstrative purposes, I'm actually going to put some data in here. 
Uh, and I, I wouldn't recommend doing that, and that will get overwritten anyhow. But you can see what it looks like. So one, two, three, four. Uh, so now we have some information that we can actually uh, graph. So now comes the fun part. Go to Tools, Script Editor. If you've never been in the script editor before, uh, chances are if you have any programming experience, you can understand it. If you have zero programming experience, um, you can still do the graphing. Analytics isn't that hard. Uh, so you're going to have to scroll down until you find the actual code. And I just happen to know it's around line 4,000. Uh, so... I'm going to scroll until I see what we're looking for. And when we programmed it, we made, we chunked all the code. So for the design analytics, you'll see those bubble letters. So you don't have to worry about most of the code in the design analytics because it's going to be captured for you automatically. But there are some lines that you'll need to know and understand. So we're looking at lines 4,090, 91, and 92. So here's what you're going to do. You need to understand what these do and then maybe add another one. So there's a method called draw graph, design graph, and it passes some parameters. If you don't know what they mean, don't worry. The only things you have to do are change some of the parameters. So the first thing is the range and the graph that we're changing here the range would be and again this is a, a poor example because there's only one graph that we're going to make some data and again just for fun I'm gonna go up to campus 2 and just breathe some life in there so we have some numbers so once you construct your table, what you have to do is figure out what the range is, and this is 252 to 254. So we'll come over to the code and change this. So 252 to 254. And this number is the row that the graph will appear on. Uh, and it, it happens to be 18 rows between each graph. Uh, so I can either change this to 82 or... I can comment out this code. If you do slash slash, it uh, turns a different color and that means this code will not run. So now I know that I can graph it at 64 because the graph that was previously at row 64 is no longer there. Uh, alternatively, I could say, hey, graph this at 82, row 82. But we'll just do it like this for fun and I'll say, campus standards you can give it whatever title you want so the only things that you really need to change are the range you have to do a little bit of math to figure out where the graph will uh, render on the on the page and in this case it's going to be row 64 which I know will be fine and then campus standards the only other option and it's not that tricky is if your graph is really really long and really high uh, for instance the first table we're graphing in the analytics actually has uh, something like 20 some odd standards and so it wasn't sufficient to have a small graph and I need to make it a little bit longer so what I did is I added a new method called draw design graph height and it takes an extra parameter so this is 850 pixels and I didn't know what number that was I you know tried 600 and it wasn't long enough I tried 2000 it was too long so I you know settled in on 850 so you have to do that initially to kind of figure out how high you want it. And then the next graph that goes underneath it, you'll have to figure out what row to start that on. But by default, if you don't use this method and you just use this method, all the graphs are 18 rows. All right, so let's see what it looks like. I'm going to save it. Then I'm going to go and graph it. So this is actually using all that code that we just made. And there's the first one. You can see this is why the height is 850 because it's so tall. There's a second one, and here's your campus standards. We just graph the, those tables. So it sounds like a lot of work, but it's not. I mean, you have to make the table in the left column design tab, kind of figure out what you want. You don't have to worry about the design tab. That just does its own thing. Um, and then in the code, you just need to add one or two lines or delete one or two lines or however you want to do that. Just modify the ranges.